I've been attending physics conferences during 20 years by now. And if I compare the very first conference I was in 1994 with the ones I attended this year, I see no difference. There were lectures, questions, posters in 1994 and also in 2015. The only thing that has changed is that back then we used transparency slides and now it's with these beamers. But everything else was constant. That can mean two things. It can mean that this format of a science conference is so perfect that it is impossible to improve. Or it can mean that we got stuck in some fossil state. Now, if you look what has changed in, in teaching, for instance, in the past 20 years, I'm afraid that we are stuck in a fossilized situation with our science conferences. And I happily challenge the situation every now and then. I try some different lecture formats, for instance. I, that's not what I will tell you here today. But I will try to share some experience with an experiment I started one and a half years ago in Lausanne, here, uh, not in this building, but very nearby, in, the, in January 2014 at the Total Energy Conference here. I decided that from then on I would try to record my, lecture, my conference presentations and put them on YouTube and see what happens. So this is one and a half years ago. Let's see what happens. What happened to that first lecture I recorded here at EPFL. And this is the output that YouTube gives you in view minutes on the vertical axis during this one and a half years. And you see that in the beginning, nothing happened. And then suddenly in May, somebody watched the entire lecture. And even six days ago, somebody did that. So in total, eight full views. That doesn't sound very much, but there were about that same number of people in the room as there are here today. So that's, well, a sizable fraction of the audience that was reached extra by putting this on YouTube. I did that several times, and actually this specific presentation turned out to be one, of the one that was least viewed. I can say now with some statistics that on average in one year you reach about the same number of people that is in the room. So it's an interesting way to increase the impact of your presentations without having to do anything extra. Just put it there and people will find it. Sometimes you even hit a sweet spot. Two months ago, I gave the introductory lecture about what is DFT in non-technical terms in a week uh, workshop for people who started to learn using DFT codes. And I've put that on YouTube as well. And that gave this result. It's a 50-minute lecture, so quite a sizable video on YouTube. And the red lines you see are multiples of 50 minutes. So every time you are above one of the red lines, the entire presentation is watched. So starting from a few weeks after putting it on YouTube, people started watching it up to even nine times on one particular day. So after less than two months, I've reached 85 full views, and that's twice as much as there were people in the room. So... If that continues for another year, that will be 500 people. So you reach an enormous audience by doing nothing extra. By now, this is even the third hit on YouTube. If you ask for density functional theory, the third video in the list will be this one. So it can be sometimes that easy. So just an invitation to you to rethink sometimes the procedures we are used to. I'm in good company here because also some conference organizers try to play that game. This is a portion of an email I got a week or two weeks ago from MRS. So they announced that you can watch some of the presentations at the MRS Spring Meeting online, free, for a limited period, if you are an MRS member. Well, by this simple technology, you could do it yourself and you can decide to offer this for everybody without restrictions. We have been talking about open data. 
this could be a way of make of making open conferences.